Welcome to the first lecture of this course, Text, Textuality and Digital Media. Uh, in this course, uh, we will look at various ways in which, various methods through which human beings have engaged in communication. Uh, the aim, the ob principal objective of this course is to understand how human beings actually operate, uh, what, what are the changes that are being brought about within the human uh, life and human society uh, through this shift from uh, the traditional media to what is called the digital media. Now, the traditional media I am uh, here primarily looking at uh, for your understanding uh, the print media. Okay? Though one would say that even electronic forms uh, like television or radio could also undergo a s significant change with the emergence of digital media. Uh, because before digital media, every other form of recording human ideas it was done through mechanical means. There would be some mechanical means uh, through which these thoughts are recorded, whether in the form of a newspaper or a book or in the form of uh, radio or television. The cameras used to be mechanical cameras, whereas now you have the digital cameras. So, uh, for television, for radio, the devices that were used for recording voice would have been mechanical devices. Now, more and more digital voice recorders are used. And this is not a very simple technological change. What I am going to argue through, the, uh, through this course and hopefully be able to communicate to you is this, that this change is extremely significant and can bring very far reaching changes in human uh, uh, relationships, society, politics, international politics, uh, which uh, uh, is something that we are going to explore in this course. Just for a uh, pointer, uh, I would like to tell you that there have been uh, historically several uh, uh, eras in which these kind of shifts have, have taken place in the past. The most recent uh, shift that uh, of this significance that had taken place took place in Europe about uh, five to six hundred years ago in the form of the discovery of the printing machine. Before that, the only method of reproduction of texts was were manual. So, we, we had a shift from the manual to the mechanical. The current era is a shift from uh, mechanical to the digital. So, what is, so what we are going to try to understand as, as part of this course is uh, the ways in which uh, the shift from manual to mechanical brought about a tremendous amount of change in the way human beings um, functioned, the way human societies were governed, human relationships, economics, there was a very great far reaching change that uh, set of changes that took place. And, and that they will help us, that, that, that history will help us understand our the pre present day uh, world. But hopefully that is somewhere we will go through the course. For now, let us understand the various kinds of uh, technologies of communication that could be there, um, that, that we have seen in human history. So, before uh, human beings uh, could read or write, they could, they, language was invented. And if you look at the history of humankind, language is a very, if you look at uh, the entire spectrum of the range, uh, time range of uh, human existence on the earth, the discovery of language uh, and oral communication is something that is a very, very uh, minor or small fraction of that larger development. So, it is a very recent phenomenon, so to say. Um, so, but before the discovery of written uh, 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 writing, human beings communicated only through oral mechanisms. And uh, something that uh, I need to tell you that after the discovery of writing, how that writing is recorded also underwent a series of changes through history. Uh, you would have heard of um, uh, 
cave paintings and cave inscriptions uh, by, by uh, Stone Age uh, humans. And you would also have heard, uh, seen the Ashokan pillar at Sarnath, for example, where inscriptions are still uh, available on stone. Uh, you would have heard of the Rosetta stone, the famous Rosetta stone, which is kept in the British Museum. Uh, an example of how uh, human beings would have communicated using uh, other mater material other than paper. Right? Now, other than, uh, uh, but uh, inscriptions on stone are not very portable. As human life became more complex, as human uh, society became more complex, you had uh, the need, the great need, human beings had a great need uh, to actually communicate in a portable form. Where, where, where portability becomes important. Stone tablets can be very heavy to ca carry. They usually are marked on buildings or put up uh, in, in special monuments and uh, uh, such uh, situations. But when trade and commerce becomes important, at that point of time it becomes important to be able to communicate using portable, uh, portable means. And therefore, we have the, uh, the uh, the use of clay tablets on which while the tablets are wet, people will make an inscription, then they will either be sun dried or fired. So, good thing about clay tablets is that they could be, they could be passed on from one place to another and could be used as, as methods of recording economic activity, like how, what is the quantity that has been purchased or how much money has been uh, gathered. So, the, or uh, to make a record of taxes, various kinds of things. Then you have uh, other forms like uh, scrolls. So, for the first uh, way in which is proto paper was uh, developed, the first kind of parchments were sort of developed. Pa papyrus was a very important source of uh, that. Uh, you have the the scrolls. What you need to understand is the difference between a scroll and a codex. So, for example, what I have on my hand is the example of a, a codex. A codex is any sort of uh, written material where things are tied at the spine and you read it by turning one page to another. Some cultures would turn the pages from right to left, some cultures would turn it from left to right. Some cultures would also turn the page from the top, uh, depending on what kind of practices there would be. But historically, there have been many other ways of recording human ideas. For example, within the Aztec civilization, there are ways in which people made recordings by tying knots on strings. Uh, there would be also, you would have heard of uh, cases where communication would uh, across distances would be uh, uh, carried out through fire or smoke messages. Uh, so, really various cultures had various ways of solving this problem of portability in communication. So, the, but it is not the same thing uh, uh, to record uh, an idea across these various media. The media actually matters in the way things are communicated. Just to give you an example. I mean, in a scroll, you understand the scroll, if you had to get to a certain point within the text, you had to roll up the two sides of the scroll up to that point and only then read. So, it made it a very, uh, very cumbersome. Whereas, for a codex, you can open the page at any place and continue reading, right. So, so and you can, you can actually turn back uh, in page. Sometimes the books can be, the early books were huge, very, very large in size. Uh, they would be, turning the pages would not be so easy, but that conceptually that would be possible. And because they were conceptually possible, people who would be writing these texts would keep it in mind and write accordingly, all right. So, uh, part of what we are going to do in this course is to explore what the form does to the content, the relationship between form and content, the, uh, the, the material that is being used to write on or write with. We also look uh, in this course, look at um, the use of writing implements uh, 
and, and, and their effect on the what, what, what is being written. Uh, and that is something that hopefully I will be able to explore along with you. But to staying with the codex, this, uh, 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 we will, uh, I would like to tell you that codex could, uh, before the invention of paper, codex predates the invention of paper, right. So, uh, in the codex, uh, you, uh, you could have in the form of uh, very thin clay tablets or stone tablets, which are tied together by the spine. With a, with, a, with a leather strip, for example. But uh, you also had later on the need for reusability. This would be very, very, uh, so stone inscriptions would be very limited in terms of reusability. You cannot reuse this, although there are examples in history where the stone will also be reused by chipping off one layer. But what was invented was were, were wax tablets or wax writing uh, systems where uh, the sheet uh, of wood would be taken and there would be a layer of wax on it and someone would take a sharp uh, implement may be made of wood or metal and inscribe on it. Once the use is over, they could either scrape off that layer of wax or put more wax on it and continue to use the same tablet. So, it was it became reusable. Now, if you take several of these wax tablets and put them together and tie them at the edge, then they would become, uh, it become, be, it, took the form of a codex, right. So, <coughs> that is, so the codex really gets more and more advanced after the coming of printing, your various kinds of bindings, various kinds of paper cuttings, uh, various kinds of uh, printing machines, till such time that you come to the digital format. And we are going to study in detail in this course, the distinction between the codex and what we call in the digital format hypertext. The hypertext is very interesting because in hypertext you can actually link various parts of the text together or various texts together all right the other important point about the hypertext is that what you you usually use an output device right a, a display device like the like the screen of a computer or the phone or the tablet to to view the text but what you're seeing on the text is rarely what the computer is, is usually not what the computer uh, uh, is storing. This, what the this computer is storing is a markup language. Hmm? You call it ML. So, you have XML or HTML, hypertext markup language HTML. So, there is a higher test between the markup language and what the user interface is. You have uh, certain softwares, for example, the usual word processor is uh, or, or, or an email is uh, what is described as what you see is what you get, uh, YCVIC it is called as an acronym. So, we tend to think that what we are writing into the word processor is what, what the computer is recording, but it is actually not. The computer is recording a much uh, complex uh, set of codes which we call markup language. And because of this markup language, what uh, hypertext documents can do is actually bring together various kinds of media together. So, imagine in a book, if you op imagine if you could open a book and you can watch a, watch a video to in it or you could have heard a, a piece of uh, a, a audio, a, a audio recording in it, that would be unthinkable, right. But on your phone, you could be scrolling through a certain news story and a video starts playing or you could be scrolling through a social media site and there uh, an advertisement starts playing. So, it is possible with, with the markup language to actually mix these various media together and produce a, a record. And this is a revolutionary change uh, in the way human beings have approached texts and they are, they are bringing about far reaching um, uh, they have far reaching implications both in terms of uh, social and economic uh, uh, implications, but also in terms of what it is doing to our ourselves, to humanity as, as such, to our brains, to our minds and the way we interact with each other. So, this is where we are going to uh, uh, try, what, what we are trying to explore through this particular course. So, I am in this, in the story, we are going to uh, begin from the oral world, 
move to the manuscript, understand the manuscript world and then move to the print world before we come to the digital world and understand its implications. But to begin with, we are going to begin with two essays by Marshall McLuhan, the commentator who had, uh, who had foreseen many of these changes coming, these changes which we are now going through in the 21st century. But he had uh, pointed out certain fundamental uh, issues which are very pertinent to us uh, in the mid 20th century. And we are going to study, begin our study by looking at two couple of essays by Marshall McLuhan. Thank you.